Welcome back, Joystick Justice League, to the 12th episode of Roundtable. Back from summer hiatus, I'm Mike Frusios. I'm Joe Morin. So, Joe, it's been uh, it's been a few weeks since we last uh, posted a video. You know, a lot, uh, not much has really happened after E3, which is to be expected. We're kind of going through like the summer news drought, where you know maybe a trailer here and there gets gets revealed, and we we do have a pretty broad list of indie games to go over in an upcoming breaking news to kind of keep you salivating for the next 12 to 18 months, and that's really the theme of of this of this podcast, Joe. Where are we going after E3? So now we've had a few weeks to let the dust settle from E3. There was a lot of hype. Fanboys were out arguing this, arguing that. And and I think at this point, Joe, originally this podcast was gonna be just kind of like a rundown of what we thought of E3. And, and at this point, I think we've heard enough opinions back and forth about you know, yeah. Far Cry 4 and Evolve, Batman, Uncharted 4, Halo Master Chief Edition, all great stuff. Like we, we said, I think if you were a gamer, you won E3, but Here's the thing, Joe. After it's inevitable after every E3, somebody it's going to be a war of who actually won the conference, who had the best conference. And I think both of I both of both, sorry, both you and I kind of had this a lot of similar opinions and we were both surprised to see what actually prevailed as as the best conference and as we know mm -hmm. wide across the net, people feel that Nintendo won E3. All right, so Joe, let me let me pass this one to you now. And normally these fan debates are, are good. It's usually good rational debates between you know who's got the better exclusives and you know, who's got the better, the more powerful hardware and, and whatnot. For the majority that I've been seeing is that a lot of people have been saying that they've been feeling that Nintendo had the best uh, showing at, at E3, and. When you and I watched uh, the digital event, you know, that was a big thing. First of all, they didn't even personally show up at E3, which, I, which which was already kind of bizarre in my opinion. But beside, but beside the point, they decided to, to to do a digital broadcast, and that that's that's fine, dandy. But I'm really reaching to to, to see why people are saying that that Nintendo won E3. Okay, uh, so. To, to, Let's stop there for a sec, Joe. You made a great point about the idea that, first of all, that Nintendo has decided over the last couple of years to ditch what they what they feel is an antiquated, kind of almost satire-worthy type of E3 conference, which is live, where you actually get reactions from the audience, which you can learn from and mm -hmm. market based upon. But no, they decided, like Nintendo fashion, to stay on their own island and control the message, which most people in the game industry have actually applauded them for doing it, saying, we're gonna do our own thing and it's not my problem. Wasn't that that's, kinda like the, the trendy quote of the of the Nintendo Direct, uh, not my I problem? Think, I think that's Reggie's new new catchphrase for yeah, whenever he- uh, For better or for worse, anyway. The, uh, I'm thinking, you know, whenever he gets kinda backed in a corner and doesn't know what he's gonna say now, he's just gonna cup, he's just gonna say, no, not my problem. Not my problem. So, okay, so Wait. let's go back to it now. So, yeah, they went, they, that, I, I I'm torn. I, I think that it's mm -hmm. great that you know that the the Nintendo Direct broadcasts to your your Nintendo console of choice. It's easily accessible on YouTube. It's a good way of controlling the message. But so uh, before we, do, I don't know, you, Joe. Like, do you think it's the right approach? Do you think that the E3 conference traditionally is dying out, and that Nintendo is kind of forging the way that? E3 is going to go in the future. Do you really think that's the case? This kind of mirrors, you know, what, what they're doing in their console space and with their with their gaming is that they're they're deciding to be different. But I personally, you know, for me, when it comes to that, I prefer the personal touch of actually being there in person, seeing people actually holding a controller there and actually playing a game right there in front of everybody. That that, that kind of stuff for me that that feels a lot more real than some guys just talking remotely. And telling you that's, this is the way it is, and that's fine. Yeah. That's basically, arguably, what Sony, Nintendo, Ubisoft, and EA did on stage too. But there's a difference, Joe. It's live, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. It's live. There's an audience. You're all together, Joe. How like one of so one of my most popular broadcasts on 24 Bit Heroes is whenever I do a watch along of of like a major video game conference, whether it be like Gamescom, Ubisoft, yep. like, sorry, EV3 or what have you. It's fun to get together and start, you know, gossiping and and debating, you know, oh, yep. was that a good reveal or what are they going to reveal next? 
man, like when we sat there and we, we did the Sony conference from my house, uh, you joined in on Twitch and we, we broadcasted it live on my yep. Twitch channel. Man, the chat was aflame. We were on the edge of our seats wondering what was gonna happen next. I, I would have done the Xbox one, but I was at work at that point, but we at least managed to do the Sony one. It, it was like it was like the Academy Awards or, or like, you know, the Grammys. It's like, who's what's next? And like, oh, what are they gonna surprise us with now? You know, and, and, and to a degree, Nintendo did that too. Yeah. But I think that there's also something about doing it live, engaging the audience response. Well, even when we were covering the the Sony conference, like we were even at the time debating, you know, what game are they going to show next? You know, were they, were they going to show Uncharted first, or were they going to keep it for that real exciting thing at the end? You know, it was a nice debate, and we were kind of guessing what was going on. It, it, it was exciting, and a lot of it was because there were games that we were legitimately excited about. That's what made it exciting. To, to see what what they were gonna actually show, right? And, and like you know, one might argue you get the you get the same feeling from pressing play on the Nintendo Direct and okay now oh wow they just revealed Zelda for Wii U that's so exciting, mm -hmm. but that's the thing like if there is something that is a bummer in that list you'll never you're just not gonna hear it right away you'll hear it in like in like the comment section of the video or something but you're not gonna hear the audience gasp or or the audience mm -hmm. laugh at like ironically at like a bummer reveal or something and, and and for and I think for developers and publishers that's an incredible way to gauge what your next e3 is gonna be like you're you're yeah. listening to your audience where I whereas I think Nintendo's trapped in this whole thing is uh, this whole idea that we're gonna write the script and whether you like it or not, this is what's going to happen. Yeah, it, it's it's that same recurring theme that I've always mentioned, uh, telling people instead of listening. Again, you know that that those kind of seems to come up, and in, in this particular case, I would say Nintendo is a little bit guilty of that. Let's talk about what actually was revealed, because, like we said, most of the internet community and the gaming community feels that Nintendo won based mostly on what happened during that under 50 minute video so yeah. let's kind of take a list what did they do well what do you what's got you kind of excited for for nintendo that would justify them winning e3 for for nintendo i mean i mean it, it it's so hard for me to to find something i mean zelda i'm kind of torn on it whether, whether it's going to be good or not because what we saw I mean, it, it, it looks like it could possibly be captured from game footage, but I mean, it, it's not clear. For, it for, seems for, to be in engine. I mean, you, they they, they, seems they had be. that long shot of the of the grass swaying, and you could see into the distance. And then the, the games developer actually said that you can travel into the distance and explore those yeah. areas. I just kind of like know a what? Skyrim light. I just you know what I mean. I've been fooled so many times with these <laughs> with these with these reveals. It, it's so hard to. Especially when it's being broadcast in the way that Nintendo decided to do it. I mean, we just don't know if what they're showing, what they're showing us, is is really what the final product's gonna be. You know, been burned. You know, most recently by Watch Dogs. You know, there, there's a game that, that the final product did not look like and did not really do what, what they were promising, what they kind of advertised. So uh, I'm, I'm, that's why I'm a little, you know, I'm being cautious when it when it comes to some of the Nintendo stuff because. You know, Splatoon. I, th I think we, we can. I think that that was pretty well in gameplay. But uh, for the rest, I, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. You know what? There wasn't a whole lot that that got me very excited. Mainly because I'm not. I'm not as big of a Nintendo fanboy as I as I, as I used to be. You know, I've kind of moved on to the other franchises. I've quite frankly kind of grown out of Mario and Yoshi and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, I, I, I think that's at the heart is the, is the problem with with their attitude right now is it, it's it's like people are, are saying, oh, Nintendo evolved so much from last E3 where it seemed like they were taking conservative stance and they were only mining old franchises. Whereas this year, it seemed like they took more risks. I'm like, really? Where are the risks in, in, in putting a, a Zelda skin on top of Dynasty Warriors? I mean, really? We, let's address Hyrule Warriors. I know it's uh, other people have been reticent about it too, but it gets back to this whole theme, Joe. I think the main problem was that people just gave Nintendo free pass this year. It's obvious it, that they're struggling. People know it, that the hammer is about to fall in the next it, couple of years. 
It hasn't been uh, just this generation, Mike. We, it, it's been like that. It was like that with the Wii U. It was like that with the N64. The, the best way I, I can You mean the original it, Wii? The original yes, Wii, you mean? Exactly. Okay, that. Yeah. And, and, and even, the even GameCube. The and even the, the GameCube and even maybe the N64 to a certain extent. And, and I think the best way to kind of put this is, like, let's say you had a kid in school who's he's not doing well. He's getting failing grades. And the parents go, no, that's okay. You'll, 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 you'll just do better next time. You know, each kind of semester going by and the kid getting kind of poorer grades each time. And just going, oh, no, you'll, you'll do better next semester. Instead of just saying to the kid, hey, you know what? You're, you're getting bad grades. You need to get your shit together. It, it, it's like they, they, it's Nintendo needs to be told that they're doing bad because it, I, I think that, that they're believing their own, they're believing this hype that, that people are feeding them, and they're just kind of going with that and just I don't know maybe just kind of blindly accepting that what they're doing is okay. Like it, it, it's it's very confusing to me. I, I think you've addressed two major concerns, Joe, and I think we're kind of getting to the core of it through this discussion because I've still really, I, I'm fighting this one, like because I know that mm -hmm. I'm in the minority. I know you're the, my, in the minority. It's 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 tough to almost believe yourself when when you just can't see what everybody else is seeing. But I see mm -hmm. you've brought two really good things to the table, Joe. You you said that first of all, you feel like you've outgrown Nintendo a bit. You don't have yep. that same lifelong affinity like a lot of other people do, where they're just diehard Mario till they die. And, and I. God love those people. That's 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 Nintendo's lifeblood. They're yeah. the ones who get their kids into Nintendo, and that's the problem, Joe. Is that now those kids have grown up and they're trying to force feed the Mario culture into their kids and their nephews and their nieces, and just from personal experience, Joe, having gone blue in the face trying to turn the younger generation on to classic old games. Those games are dinosaurs to these kids, man. These kids are into their iPads, they're into mm -hmm. Minecraft, they're into like free to play games on Steam. They're now starting to be discover PC through the free to play section on Steam. Mm -hmm. Mario doesn't matter as much to these kids growing up. They, 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 yeah, they grew into it, but it's it's they weren't there in 1985. Yeah. They weren't yeah. there when Mario had just dominated popular culture among kids. And, and I feel uh, like it's more force-fed. And I feel, and I see where you feel, Joe. It's like, does Mario have the same pull anymore? Especially, you know, the, the hotly contested Rayman topic. Rayman versus Mario. Could Rayman ever outthrown Mario? And I've seen people write articles saying, obviously not. But what do you think? Well, with Rayman, uh, I mean, it, if Mario keeps kind of going the way and just kind of... You know, just kind of staying the course. You know, it it could potentially happen. I'm not going to say that I will for sure, but you just kind of continue to, to coast. You know, it's going to catch up to you sooner or later. You know, let, let me make a, a tech reference here. Bla uh, Rim with BlackBerry. There's a company that that coasted. They they, they got a ki uh, they got a killer. They got a hip product, and they coasted with it. They didn't continue to innovate after that, and it caught up to them. Same thing can That's happen. Right. With, the same too, thing can happen with the same thing can happen with Nintendo if they get too comfortable with where where they are. It it it's just a, it'll be a matter of time before it does catch up to them. And, and you know, another important and, yeah. factor here too is just just the way that the, the, the economy is now. Like you mentioned, these kids are, are mainly playing on on things that they already have, like their tablets, their phones, or a computer that they have, or they don't have to pay a lot of money up front. But let's be honest, the, the, the economy. Isn't it the greatest right now? Are are are, are parents going to go out and buy their kid a Wii U and these these amiibo NFC characters and all this kind of stuff? And they, it's it's too much of, a, of an expense. And they, they, these kids don't have the money to spend out of their own pocket. They're just kids, and to, to ask their parents to, to to throw all this money into that kind of stuff, uh, it's it's not going to fly for everyone. I'll tell you right now. I, I think you're right, Joe. You you got a lot of these. It's, it's like they're trying to inflate this bubble of Nintendo out in the video game world like oh they did so well but they don't really have much of a basis that's kind of addressing your second concern Maurice you just felt like there's nothing really that got you excited and you have this bad feeling and I know you can't really place your finger on it Joe because you look at this list of games like I do we've talked extensively there's nothing really wrong with that list no. of games they revealed like I think Bayonetta 2 looks awesome I think Splatoon could be all right. Mario Maker, not my cup of tea, but I think Captain Toad is the best thing they showed. Legend mm -hmm. of Zelda is a system seller for me. But, Joe, you and I both have normal jobs. We both are part of that fabled 99%, okay? That's a lot of goddamn people who, 
and I know because I leave my house like you do and I talk with real people out there mm -hmm. and I'm not just sitting up on my rich high horse that most people have had to make the choice, okay? Xbox One or PS4 and why? Because they have third fucking party support and they also have really good online, they have streaming and they have customer loyalty programs, which Nintendo's starting to latch onto. But Joe, on this list of games, where's Batman, Joe? Let's, where's Mortal Kombat? Where's Far look, Cry 4, the most trending game of E3 2014? Let's look, let's look at, at what I think probably the you know two two uh, big upcoming games and one that's that that will be coming to to the, the new consoles: GTA 5, Metal Gear. Campaign and Destiny, three, yeah, no, absolutely, no, three big ones, three big games that will never see the light of day on Wii U. Not, it's not, not, not going to happen. So for somebody, so when I when I go to suggest a console for somebody, when it comes to Nintendo, I, I can really only say that it would be good for somebody who's a hardcore Nintendo fan. Or who who loves Mario and absolutely has to play Zelda. Other than that, you're, you're not going to be able to play the, a lot of the really big games that your friends are going to be playing on the other consoles or or, or on, a, on a PC. Joe, let's talk about Destiny. Des I've been we've been both been tracking this game. We both mm -hmm. play like we played the alpha. We played the beta. Yep. I was a non-believer at first, like a lot of people, and now I'm a believer, okay? I know where this game is going. I ha I haven't seen hype for a game build like this in a long time, Joe, where the community, regardless of what platform you're on, is gonna be playing this game, okay? If this game can run on the PS3 and Xbox 360, why can it not run on Wii U? Answer, online. Yep. It just sucks, okay? That's what, number one, everybody just admits that the online is lacking. It's getting there somewhere with Mario Kart 8, and, and obviously Smash Brothers is going to have to run like a beast, you know, because they're mm -hmm. they're betting their house on Smash Brothers this holiday, and they're going to win. I yeah. know that they will. Smash Brothers yeah. is going to win Christmas, hands down. Let's move on from that topic. But what happens after that, Joe? Like you said, if you only have the money to buy one next-gen console, what are you realistically going to get? Are you gonna get the hardcore Mario machine and only play those games, or are you gonna get something from the other two camps that is gonna play most of the games out there and really your choice of one or the other, Xbox or PS4, it comes down to whether you like Master Chief or Drake better. Yeah, you know, you know what, uh, what's gonna happen, you know, this kind of reminds me as, as going back to being a kid, when, when, it, when a kid would get uh, one of the consoles that wasn't very popular or got stuck kind of the parents bought them one of the shittier consoles that, that kid's probably was probably going to get beat up i think they are uh, it, it may even be possible is that some of these I kids like are the getting sega master system's better than nes and then you just get so, beat down by so, every, by so, half the schoolyard who so thinks like, you're an idiot I, I i can almost kind of see some some kids getting a wii for christmas and then get a getting a beat up at school because they're not gonna have <laughs> they're not gonna have a game that's gonna be able to play destiny or, or gta or i mean I mean, it's like, what did you the, do? The, like, we were supposed to play Destiny together, and you went and got yeah. a Nintendo. Yeah, I mean, you're going to be able to play Far Cry Three. You're not going to be Evolve. able to play The Order, Entwined, Infamous, Mortal Kombat, man. Um, yeah, Mortal Kombat. Uh, like, I this mean, is a big list, Joe. Like, really, like, let's let's. Okay, on, I, I don't on, like on, listing on. off games, but let's put this in perspective for 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 people to really put 2014 and 15 in perspective. No Destiny, no Minecraft, Assassin's Creed. Call of Duty, I'm reading a list here. Battlefield, mm -hmm. Far Cry 4, Dragon Age Inquisition, Arkham Knight, Mortal Kombat X, GTA 5, mm -hmm. Metal Gear, The Crew, The Division, basically mm -hmm. anything from Ubisoft and Electric Art, Electronic Arts who embarrassingly wrote off the Wii U and, on Twitter and that was bad yeah. business. But Joe, at the end of it, what is it all about? This is a business and I hate to be that cynical, but I don't think Nintendo is doing good business. Well, what what I mean, why I mean, why why would I feel why do we, we I know you kind of feel that way too let's list up why are they doing bad business because shutting out shutting out and, and not having any of these third party games I mean it, I, I mentioned this before we started recording some of the shareholders sitting on that Nintendo board have got to be sitting there going what the hell are you guys doing what are you doing? Like, like if you guys don't get your stuff together, we're gonna get out of here. We're gonna go invest in a company that knows what the fuck they're doing. 
you're right. And, and you know, we, we saw that article of that very, like, it, it, he was, he obviously didn't get what the game industry is about, but unfortunately, Still. he represents most of the people who play the stock market. The stock market exactly. people, at the end of the day, they don't give a shit about Nintendo's dream, about no Nintendo's one. identity. They care about whether it makes a return, and it's exactly. not. And it's because of poor management. And you know what, man? I, my heart goes out to Iwata and Fizeme. They seem like really cool guys that I would love to have a beer with and play some NES. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. I don't think that they have the vision to run that company into the black again and really take over. And, and man, we got like, why? Why did the third parties leave, Joe? Why do you? Why do you think? Like, you know, like, why? Why won't not do Minecraft? Like, why is he even not considering Minecraft for Wii U? There, I think it's as simple as it, there's just no justifying it. There's not enough of an audience on there. The people that that have a Wii U are, are playing the, the 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 Mario's, the Zeldas. The, the Pokemons and stuff like that. It's just it's not a console that seems to attract those type of players. The players have become more diverse in their tastes. So they, yes. they demand a whole wealth of content. But at mm -hmm. the end of the day, we are all social animals. I can't play single player games the rest of my life. I need to interact with people. And yeah. unfortunately, most people I know are either playing an Xbox or a PS4. It's yeah. become the point, Joe, like you mentioned with the economy earlier, that it's really the, the, the haves that can afford to have that second and maybe third console. You know, it's a lot of people say, Thirds. oh, if you're, if you're a true video game lover, you'll have everything. I'm like, forget, welcome for, to reality. Forget third console. The majority of the people I know, they, they, they've picked one console. You know, the other gamers that, that I know have either bought a, a PS4 or an Xbox or One. Or an Xbox One. It's pretty much almost neck and neck like the Super Nintendo Genesis era, which I believe absolutely that this eighth generation is gonna mirror the fourth. But anyway, Nintendo is at the risk, and I, as of after, okay, Smash Brothers is gonna define this holiday. We already know that. There's nothing yep. in either camp other than say Master Chief Collection and maybe Sony is even worse off for Christmas. All their major stuff got delayed. So Nintendo yep. wins Christmas by Smash Brothers by default. But like we mm -hmm. said, what happens after. And, and when you see Fiza May saying some outlandish things and getting support for what he's saying, I, I start to question the credibility of all these writers and these critics who who really seem to have have this starry eyed, naive perspective where Nintendo's going. I think they want them to succeed so hard that they need to write good things about them and forgive their misgivings. Joe, let's talk about some of these, man. It's like the you know, the, the Twitch one is a, is a big one. I mean... But explain that if, be, if anybody doesn't know what that is. For, for everybody who doesn't know what Twitch is, Twitch is a channel No, I mean, the, yeah, the, the situation, what's happening with Twitch, sorry. What's happening with Twitch? Well, Twitch was just recently uh, acquired by Google. So it's going to be tightly integrated with with, with uh, YouTube, and we're essentially going to be. I think it's really going to benefit Twitch. This is getting maybe slightly off topic here, but it, it's it's really going to benefit because you're going to be able to post right right, right from your Twitch right, right, right to YouTube. You'll, you'll probably even have the the ability to you know people watching your most recent videos on YouTube will probably be able to be notified on there with a little thing on there saying that you're you're live. It's it's, it's going to be a cool thing. But I mean, Reggie is just saying that he just he doesn't understand why people want to watch people play video games, and that, that's a baffling statement for me to figure out. You know what, Joe? He represents the people who just don't get the future of, of Twitch, who didn't, he, who, who, like all along, like man, when I started broadcasting about a year and a half ago, people I knew were saying, "Why would anybody want to watch people play video games?" I'm like, "You'd be damn surprised." I was, I didn't get it either until I saw it for myself. You know, it's just, it, we, we obviously, we've talked about this many times, the benefits of streaming, mm. Joe. It, like, number one, it's a great way to find out if a game is good or bad. If you don't believe all the mm. mainstream publications and biased reviews out there, you can judge for yourself by watching the, the limitless amount of, of Let's Play videos that are out there. Twitch is mm. huge, Joe, but even Twitch, man, we talked about this before we broadcast, Twitch has only just begun. We have no idea oh, yeah. of what, we're starting to see it. We're, we have no idea of the capabilities of integrating streaming and video gaming. We've only seen the Let's Play, which is the infancy. Now, what are we seeing? Twitch plays Pokemon. Community-driven yeah. games. 
Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls for PS4 and Xbox One is gonna have integrated interactive streaming options where the audience that's, can actually decide your path via vote. That's pretty sweet, you know, I mean, that could branch off into so many other things. I mean, it could, you could even be playing, like, say, Madden, if there's a better version of it coming hopefully soon, that uh, you could even have your audience pick the plays call or, your play or, or, or call the plays or, or choose the teams that you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna pick or or even maybe even be able to maybe even commentate on some of the uh, the games being played I mean it, it, it could really I, I'm excited especially I think them getting acquired by Google is a good thing because I mean now they have limitless resources and uh, I'm interested to see how just how the service will improve go. Joe oh the it will improve, will improve. yeah and All I the want, people are saying, "Oh, Google's evil. Google's evil. It's gonna be bad." No, man. Twitch needs help. Okay, there. It's a. It's a crappy interface. Sorry, Twitch. I love you, but yeah. it's it's an archaic interface. And there's also the the 10 second delay problem. The Can we get delay, like yeah. some super coder in there to fix that latency yeah. with that money and research? You know, maybe I'm I'm naive in suggesting that, but I think that's the yeah. future. We need to bring down that latency. But regardless, Joe. You've mentioned several good reasons why Twitch, why, why streaming is is not unimportant as as what the skeptic said, but is actually going to define, in my opinion, the eighth generation way more than Connect or Project Morpheus or all these other little trinkets. If I were a developer and I wanted to be on the cutting edge, I'd say fuck Project Morpheus, fuck Connect. I'm going to go make the next Twitch Plays Pokemon and actually make it work on a non chaotic level that actually works as something that is tangibly played. Yeah. Thinking outside it, the box, man, and that's what, unfortunately, love or hate the major corporations, they've got the money and capital and the people in the right places to think outside yeah. the box. And, th you know, in thinking outside the box, you know, just doesn't seem to be in Nintendo's DNA or, you know, th uh, maybe I shouldn't put they it that way. Do. They do. They, they think outside of a box, but their box is all fucked up. They're, it's not a box <laughs> in relation to other boxes. Yeah. It's like this box is going to be whatever I want it to be and you're going to yeah. open it. Whereas Microsoft and Sony are listening to what's going on around them and they well, are either innovating ahead of time or mm. responding and running the race. Xbox One has turned itself around and is now a competitive console which I believe yeah. is going to be probably the genesis to PS4 Super Nintendo. Mm -hmm. That remains to be seen but if sales figures stay constant and the things keep the way they're going I think it's going to be a pretty much neck and neck race whereas Nintendo, the Wii U, if you have that 350 bucks that you can just burn knowing that you're only gonna get pretty much first party games and a couple of third parties if you have that money to burn and it's a lot of money for most of us god god love you for doing it but it's really gonna be the side of fries to the burger that is ps4 and xbox one and and i don't remember nintendo ever being a side of fries man <laughs> nintendo is supposed no. to be the main course and now it's gonna be that oh if i can afford it i'll if my second console will be a wii u and that and, yeah. and, and that it risks being a turbo graphics or a neo geo joe yeah you know it, it's it's like uh, getting the hot apple pie with your mcdonald's dinner you know it's you know need, need, you know, another big thing too with the, the you want wii it but you don't need it exactly but another thing with the, the wii u though is like, the, the lack of the uh, the indie game support as well you know that, that, that's a, a big thing on ps4 and you know, starting to be a little bit on the xbox one but you know the indie support is is not good on the Wii U either. I mean, all, all these big, well-known indie games like Hotline Miami and whatnot. I'm not going to see. I'd them. say Joe, you just just the big one right there. Devolver Digital is arguably the biggest, one of the biggest indie publishers now, and they will be. Like they are going to be the indie publisher yeah. of this generation, and they have a non-presence on Nintendo, even though Nintendo yeah. has no problem with getting games like Devil's Third and ultra-violent games, which is mm -hmm. pretty much what most of uh, Devolver stuff is, they have no need to be. And why? Because they have already said that they love Sony, and that is okay. You may love or hate Devolver Digital for saying something like that, being allegiant to a console, but that is their decision because they were treated well. And when Reggie fils says stuff like, 
not my problem. And then, when, you know, there's the, the famous part that everybody thought was clever where one of the claymation guys in the audience who represents the cynical old school yeah. E3 guy who is irrelevant now. He's like, where's Mother 3, Reggie? And then he shoots him with a fireball as, to, as if to say, stop us with all your, yeah. stop giving us suggestions. Just let yeah. us do what we think is right. Yeah. And when you say fuck yeah. you to your audience like that, yeah. Where no, do you go, Joe? Yeah. Are you just yeah, gonna that, say, "Oh, give it to me, Nintendo, give it to me," <laughs> or are you just gonna yeah, say, "No, I'm gonna go to the place that actually respects me"? Like, "Oh, hey, PlayStation Plus, I pay 50 bucks a year and I get free games," or Xbox Live, I pay 50 bucks a year and I get free games, you know, <laughs> and that's, apps. That's a, that's a big. That's and a big. Streaming. Se- that's a big selling point, you know. It, it's it's you know, just more features, like you said too. Too, I mean, I mean, you know that. That was kind of joking at the, at the beginning, of the game, but still, I mean, when, when you uh, you openly take a jab at the at the, the core gaming audience, you're like, yeah, that, that that's not only a bold move, but that's man, that's. I, I get it, Joe. I get it. Yes, there are <laughs> assholes out there, Joe. That that to say, fuck you, Nintendo, make Mother Three or fuck you kind of thing, and that's not fair. Oh, yeah. No. But at the same time, there are people like us who say, like, politely, please reveal Metroid. Please reveal Pokemon for Wii U. Just do us a favor and give us what they are asking you to do. Go yeah. kiss Notch's ass and bring Minecraft over to the Wii U. Do it, mm. Nintendo. Humble yourself like you've done before, but they won't because they're too proud to do it, man. And that's why they're too proud to get rid of Iwata. And that's why, love him or hate him, shareholders have a right to say what the hell is going on here. See, now... Shouldn't the, the, the shareholders have, have had the ability to actually vote him out of there? They voted him back in. They made so, the decision. They felt that so, he was enough because of the 3DS uptick. You know, and that was their s- argument, that he, he could lead and that they were just going through basically a dry spell. And, the, the, and the, they bought it. So that, that, that's so interesting to, in, to me. that they, so, obviously, so obviously people on that, that shareholders board clearly aren't, aren't are gamers. They're, they're businessmen. I don't know what's going on, man. I think they, they, it's a mix of both, but I just feel like they don't, they don't have a visionary leading that company. They have suits that, that are good at like voting on good decisions or maybe fils may and Iwata would be better suited to other positions within the country. Like maybe Iwata could just, I'm sorry, fils may could just be the, the front man who goes to conferences because people seem to like him. Iwata's also very personal. People like him because he's humble and he could run the Nintendo Direct channel. That could be his operation, right? But yeah. in terms of seeing 10 years into the future, Right now, Nintendo needs somebody like a Jack Tretton or a Shuhei Yoshida or Mark Cerny. Yeah, people who are Mark visionaries, Cerny. people who can see beyond this Christmas and see what our gamers going to be asking for in the next two to five years. And that's what I feel like Sony has done the best out of anybody in the last few years because they woke and up Microsoft. and now Xbox is getting there. Yep, you know, uh, bringing on uh, on on Phil there. That was that, that was a, a very good move. You know, started off with with gang, with. Uh, Making the the connect uh, an option, that, that that was a very important move. Like it's important word there, option. Making the connect something that you can choose whether to have or not, and not have, have to go through this reaching for shit stuff. You know, oh, I have to reach out my hand and I have to be exactly a certain distance away from the camera. Otherwise, I can't reach and push the buttons carefully. Like, just you know, if people want to do that, just that, that's fine. But don't don't force it. So that was a big thing that they, 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 they did, and so unusual for Microsoft to actually start listening. Uh, that, that was surprising for me. That, that that was big. I wasn't expecting that. I thought Microsoft yeah. was just going to say, say, screw you guys, you, the Kinect, you, you're too bad, you're going to use it. So it, That's it was fine. Sweet. Like They did a yeah. 180. That's fine. You know what? Yeah. They, they got flack for it. They recovered in the long run. What matters more, the, 180, the fact that they had to do a 180 or the fact that they delivered? Because even yeah. Sony did a complete 180 with the seventh generation, man. They listened. They yeah. knew that things were fucked with the PS3 cell architecture, and they had mm-hmm. to start going. Like I don't know how they did it, but they must have had it, like sleepless nights, like in the developers' offices, saying, "This is how it works. This is how you get the most out of it. This is how mm-hmm. you blah 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 blah." It's 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 doing things to correct your wrongs rather than just kind of whitewashing them and saying, "Don't worry, we'll get another burst of creative inspiration down the road, and we'll really turn the Nintendo around." Unfortunately, yes, I know at the end of the day it's about games, but technology drives the games, and they are in the back seat for the 
for pretty much so, like the first time in history. It's been trending that way. You know what it feels like, Mike? It, it feels like Reggie is like doing like a Jedi mind trick on people. Like it's okay. It'll be okay. It'll be we're, okay. We're, 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 we're Nintendo. It, it's gonna be okay. Exactly. It's the whole Disney <laughs> philosophy. It's like it's Disney. It'll be okay. And as we're starting to notice, as the generations wear on and the internet explodes and, and more creative properties get strewn into the popular culture. I just, I don't know if that's enough anymore just to, to, to go on Mario and Zelda alone. Just to, uh, this, I, this idea of what games could be and what they should be. It's, it's the same thing that happened with Capcom. There was all this controversy. Oh, what would the industry be like without Capcom? Oh, it's gonna be a, a, a recession in the industry. I'm like, it's a greedy company that got what, got what was coming to it. Yeah. And I'm sorry, but somebody else will pick up, somebody else will do Street Fighter, somebody else will do Resident Evil. It's just just the way things go. P companies live, companies die, companies fall. That's, that's what happens in the movie industry. It's what happens in the music industry. Change happens, okay? Mm -hmm. Nintendo, unfortunately, didn't adapt to change. No, and they just don't appeal to a wide enough audience. That's, that's a big thing. And when, you, when, you, when, when I'm, I'm looking at this list in front of me, the 90% of it, I would say at least, is first-party games. That to, to me, that, that that's, that's 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 not a minor thing here. Okay, that that that's if it, that's all. These are all the games that they have, and if if you don't see anything on that list there that you like, you just you can't justify that. And the, the list is just so much longer. When you look at the Microsoft, when you look at the Xbox list, and you look at the at the Sony list, the, the, the list of games that you have to choose from, there's there's just there's more there. It's as simple as that. You have more of a choice, and you have more games that you can play. And just the high accessory rate too is 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 not a good thing. I I really think that this amiibo thing, Joe, you oh mentioned this earlier in the podcast. I don't feel the same way. I think I think I feel it too. I feel even though like people like to gloss over the amiibo thing when they when they report on E3 and most of the videos we watch, they they talk about mm -hmm. oh it seems cool, but I'm too old to really appreciate it. The kids will love it. Let's talk about the reality of the world today, okay? Mm -hmm. Skylanders, Joe, according to VGCharts.com, has made what was it uh, over 13.5 billion or million units I, I i i was getting used to reading the figures but it's it's in the top infinity yep. is down to like a quarter of those sales yeah all these parents they're out buying 10 15 dollar skylander figures and being forced to collect them all under that whole collect them all <laughs> mentality that is bred into kids through the propaganda of advertising now they've yep. got the disney infinity thing so now disney infinity 2.0 comes out this this christmas with the marvel characters and and the guardians of the galaxy tie in and that's going to be huge because all the kids are going to see guardians of the galaxy and then they're all going to want to get the guardians figures when they go to toys r us and then now the amiibos poor on parents top of it. poor <laughs> fucking parents who have to go buy Amiibos now, and there's a million of those you can make, Joe. Dude, you, 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 once, you, once you mine the Nintendo catalog of Amiibos, dude. And then mm -hmm. on top of that, th the kid wants an eye touch as well. They, not, not The Nintendo yeah. is not just enough. They, that's for the bedroom. They also need the eye touch yeah. for when they go to school. Poor oh parents, God. man. I'm telling you, like, yeah. seriously, wh where are your average parents going to say, you're getting the PS4 <laughs> with yeah. the Plus and the indie <laughs> games or the Xbox <laughs> One, and that's what you get and you like it? You know, it, it, I don't it's, know, man. Uh, you're you're, you're, you're going to have pissed off parents who are going to have really disappointed children. You know, it, it, it's, it, you know, uh, you know. It's you're right, Joe. Yeah, I'm sorry to cut you off again, but you're right. You, yeah. A lot of these Nintendo exclusives are either... Like mostly single player oriented or like yeah. slight multiplayer, but really the kids that are growing up want to play Destiny and Evolve and Call of Duty and Hardline with their friends. Far Cry 4 is going to be what everybody's going to be playing and Destiny and no Nintendo. And, and, and that's the thing. People think that, oh, because I own all three consoles, I'm going to support them equally. Yeah, good luck with that. You know, you only have so many hours in the day. I had the PS2, the GameCube, the Xbox, and I played the PS2 because that was the brand I preferred. The GameCube collected dust. It did. So did the really Xbox. Did. Yeah. You choose one. You don't really just kind of go back and forth. I don't know. I'm just speaking for myself, but 
I literally, I literally used my GameCube as a doorstop when I got my PS2. It, it I, I, uh, I'm not using it as an expression. Uh, it, the GameCube literally held the door open in my bedroom. All right, that's what it, it was relegated to after I got a PS2. That's all it did. Because, it, because you, you just find a console you're comfortable with and you devote your time to it. That's it. Because yeah. you like the infrastructure, and especially now yeah. with achievement culture and. and yeah social communities it's getting even harder to separate those camps and at least yeah. joe the gamecube had stellar third-party support multi-plats yeah. were like this it was basically xbox and first graphically gamecube and then ps2 at the bottom gamecube games look better than ps2 games but in the end sony and xbox just had the franchises to go along with the multi-plats and in the case of multi-plats joe people don't really care what it looks like as long as it's playable on the console they prefer and, yeah. and when you see less of those showing up on wii u that's troubling to me beyond this christmas and smash brothers and all that fun stuff let's be honest with you when you, when you look at it uh, especially the younger audience i'll see in the, the mid to, to high to, you know, the, the, let's say the mid-teens they're going to want to have the same consoles that their friends are going to have right and when you look at uh, at the, the games on, on on wii u it just it it doesn't fit that that formula of being able to play online with your friends. There's there's just none of these games. Splatoon that really does fit that mold. Yeah, it's sort sort of, but I mean, it, it, it's debatable whether that. I mean, that that game looks like it could be a little too chaotic and a little confusing. And again, that's just my opinion. But the other you know, problem the, the, is the, that the, most the, of your friends don't have a Wii U. The, 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 <laughs> so the, who are you gonna play the, with? The kids. No, the I mean, kids play online the, with strangers. The kids want to play Call of Duty against each other and and what Destiny's gonna be and GTA and. Beating a dead horse here, but that's just not available on Wii U. Um, it's just so, it just isn't. Then let's not beat a dead horse. We've obviously addressed yeah. what we feel was lacking in the criticism of the Wii U. Yes, like we said, nothing wrong with the lineup of games. I think some of those games are stellar. I think some of those games yep. were ho hum. But yep. there is a bigger elephant in the room that we finally had to address. Let's turn around, Joe. What can what advice can you start offering for Nintendo? Like like if if yes, okay, if, if we're stuck with Iwata and Fiza, may God love these guys, they have passion. What could they be doing better, Joe? Again, my two big things are listening to what the the gamers are are, are asking for and, and kind of work around that, which the other two companies have, have done. Start listening to what your gamers want and and, and give them what they want. I start kissing some developer ass. Sony, oh, Sony reportedly sent Notch it's a almost, gold PS3 to get him yeah. to make Minecraft for Sony, and it worked. Yeah, it, it's uh, if they're going to do that, they better do it sooner than later, or it could be too late. What I think a thing that could really help N Nintendo is uh, maybe possible to do on the Wii U: make your entire library of games available digitally, right from your your first game up until the let's say the the, the latest. Uh, Wii game, make your make your entire library available digitally to anybody who uh, has some, maybe have a little subscription service on the Wii U. That to me would would, uh, would possibly be so able you're to talking salvage. GameCube, Wii games, yeah, N sixty four, exactly. And, and I, I think they I think they need to do it faster. Um, yeah. Just kind of like what they do with the PS one digital collection on the PS three. It keeps yeah. growing every week. Now they've gotten into the Japanese yeah. stuff. Obviously, it, because of licensing issues, not everything's going to make the cut. Yeah, but it's uh, it, to me. It, I mean, it w I don't think it, it would save things, but it would. Uh, it would. It would appeal a little bit more. It, 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 at least you, you have a larger library, and it, and it's just. Uh, I mean, obviously, we don't want them to, to just dish the Wii U and come up with something too new because then, then they just lose all confidence with everybody involved, gamers, and yeah, like shareholders, with the Saturn. and everybody, and, and the Dreamcast. And, uh, you know, so don't bail on it, but, uh, you know, it, it's, I, I, I would say start, start uh, researching on your, on, your, on your next thing and, and, and just, you know, I'd, I'd like to sit to say to Nintendo, you know, kind of kind of listen to what people want out of a Nintendo console and go around that. But I, I don't know if they're gonna go about it that way. It's just a, a matter of if Nintendo really wants to uh, to start listening. And like I, I think you said that uh, I think there needs to be a, a major leadership change there. That's the at the top of the list. 
Yeah, it's just somebody you can see into the future. But I, I think Joe, they really need to start working on on the people, the things that are co people are constantly complaining about, but yet there's never any response. I.e., I. like I hear, like I don't know personally, but I hear it's extremely difficult to like link all of your online accounts between 3ds. Mm -hmm and Wii U and all that it stuff. Is. They need to make online more seamless and more present. They need to make it easier to get on there. They need to lift the restrictions on people trying to promote their damn games on YouTube. They need to That's stop trying to control the message so much. They need to just let people do what they need to do in the independent community. And, and, and like it, it just again, it's that attitude that prevails that we we need to to do everything for you. Reggie Fizeme when he criticized Twitch streaming, he said that yeah. While I don't understand why watching gameplay would be fun, you know, I'm not I'm paraphrasing right now, but he he said something to the fact that like if we were to get involved in Twitch, it would be a very controlled experience where say the developers or gameplay experts get on there and they show you tips and tricks uh, of the games and how to play them and how to get the most out of them. That's not why most people watch. Twitch. Most people watch Twitch to either like to see maybe somebody rage at a hard game, or to see something they've ever played before, or just to chat, or watch something stupid. There's a it's, multitude of reasons that they're just not understanding, and it's they have a the lot more, to, to, to see why it's so important. It's a lot more complex, more more complex and multi-layered than what they're thinking. It, it like uh, just having developers play their games in front of you. That's not what Twitch is about. I mean, Twitch is about the, these different personalities, uh, the streamers playing uh, playing in their their own unique way to to, to their audience. Yeah, and, so and just, I think uh, they need I think they need to embrace the Twitch. Uh, I think they need to embrace the Twitch platform, mm -hmm. and there's ways to do that without having built-in streaming. Which I think I personally, without knowing any specifics, I don't think the Wii U is capable of mm -hmm. having a built-in streamer but so. doesn't mean that you can't have a built-in app where you can watch where it directs you to nintendo streams and then mm -hmm. conversely people who are streaming aren't going to get hit with copyright strikes and, and bullied around because they're 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 streaming quote unquote copyrighted content the 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 the, 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 the atmosphere has changed they need they need to get with the times nintendo's got to realize that, that that's a way of promoting their their stuff we're, we're only where that can be an issue is if somebody is taking a Nintendo game, ripping it, putting it out there, and saying, "I'm selling this as mine." Yeah, go after that, that, that kind of stuff. Don't go after somebody that's just playing your game to to basically kind of promote it, right? There, there's a big difference between there between somebody promoting and somebody taking your shit and selling it as their own. Yeah, go after that. That's theft, but. Just streaming a, 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 a game, you know, like you it's can't free go, promotion, like, man. It, you it can't is. ask for better advertising than that. Yeah, yeah. It's Bad or good, you know. I'm sure that ride that wrote what was it, ride to hell, retribution to hell. I mean, oh I it, like all that. I'm sure it sold a one. few copies. Bad or good, you know, like even with all the bad criticism, it show, sold a few copies. I'm sure yeah. somebody was interested in seeing. But regardless, I, I think there's ways for them to turn around on that front and embrace it for mm -hmm. maybe the next when they're foray into the next generation, which I probably see somewhere around 2016 and 17 they're going to release they're going to now they're yeah. going to put out some new hardware next and and i think if nintendo were listening i think that the thing they would constantly see from people like me you and i'd say the greater critical community is that nintendo needs to bridge the gap between mobile and television set they mm -hmm. need to make a device like the Wii U gamepad that actually does have a multi-touch <laughs> interface and not just a pseudo mm -hmm. one that can either be played mobile, like a Vita, or you can shoot that image to your TV and stream. Yeah. That's what they need to be doing. But Joe, I mean, yeah. if, if you were if you were on Nintendo's board of execs and you were creative and, and you knew that more re realistically in the next five, six years, the PS5, the Xbox Two are gonna come out, most likely yeah. with 4K gaming. Streaming will be a given by then. It'll be top notch. Mm -hmm. What does Nintendo do in the face of all this? Is that a, that's a hard question, isn't it? But yeah, because it all it all comes down to you know, it, it, Mike. It, it's like uh, trying to get uh, an alcoholic to stop drinking. If uh, you know, if they don't want to help them, 
You, you could you could talk to them. Not and that you're suggesting to... all Nintendo fans are alcoholics. It's just I'm, it's I'm, just I'm, an I'm, I'm, I'm making, <laughs> I'm making it's, it's maybe a bit of a stretch comparison here, but I'm going to go with it anyways. But it, it, it's it's like try, trying to get an alcoholic to, to stop drinking. You could, you could try and talk them off the off the edge all, all you want, but if they don't want to change it, change themselves, it's not going to happen. Right, so we, 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 we can suggest things to Nintendo and try to get them to change until we're blue in the blue in the face, but if they don't want to do it, it's not going to happen. So it all, I think they're kind of like a spoiled kid. They're like a spoiled kid, Joe. That you just have to, you have to way, keep yeah. like you have to keep punishing them until they finally stop whining <laughs> and give in. And, and, <laughs> Bad and Joe, Nintendo. I Bad Nintendo. <laughs> I don't think there's anything saying with their with the cash reserve they have to develop a PC architecture based successor to the Wii U, okay? I can't say that it won't happen, Joe, because look at the GameCube. The GameCube was mm. one of the first Nintendo consoles to embrace pseudo PC architecture. What, what was it, the ATI chip that it used for graphics? Yeah, and it yeah, just yeah, blew the PS2 out of the water. Resident Evil yeah. 4 is better looking on the GameCube, hands down. Yeah, you know, it, it had a decent uh, GPU in that thing. It, it was uh, that, didn't get a lot of attention. That was actually one of the few people that kind of picked up and then tried to make people aware of that. I think they should come out with the Famicom 3 with, with uh, like 10 gigs of RAM and super graphics chips, Mario in 4K, and they'll Nintendo be on top said, again. But maybe I'm just wishful thinking right Nintendo now. Need, it, it, Nintendo needs to, to, to go back to like the, like the, the Super Nintendo days and, and make a system. And then just say, you know what? We make we make the big, the the best most kick-ass system. Come to us. Give us. We a want you to make games for our system. It. Yeah. Okay. Fine. You make games for the competitors. Well, we want you to make them better on ours. And, yeah. and there was a time when people trusted Nintendo, you know, and they knew mm -hmm. that it was going to be like. But I think again, like when you keep thumbing your nose at, at the people who. who it's hard, Joe. I know trollers can be assholes, even though they have good intentions of uh, like <laughs> recommending some good stuff to you. They they just say it yeah. in such a brazen and insulting way that yeah, Nintendo's gonna say fuck you. Mother three can shove it up your ass, but in the end, Mother three will sell Wii U's. Okay, that is yeah. a given. Okay, that is a given, and they're saying fuck you. We'll do whatever we want. So hey, if that's gonna be their attitude, I'm sorry, Joe, but. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to sound this and say this to be offended, offensive to indie developers, but they have become, and and for for good reasons, an in, a kind of entitled, sensitive bunch now. They expect oh, respect, and they deserve it because they work hard. But they mm -hmm. will gravitate towards the publishers that give them respect. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing, and and everybody knows that's where Sony made its bed this generation was by getting in with the indies. Yeah, and those programs of uh, you know going to places like Brazil and stuff, and, and uh, giving these um, small-time developers the opportunity to, to, to release a game on PS4—that's killer. That, 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 that's that's that, that's a very unique and very cool thing in, in the industry, and you, you don't see Nintendo doing stuff like that. You, you just you don't. And Microsoft's doing the same thing. They had an extensive yep. list of indies, and people might say, "Okay, well, indies are kind of hipsterish, and you know, like only a niche Bullshit. people play Bullshit. those games." I'm like, maybe, but your next big AAA developer is going to be one of these indies that's making yep. Hotline Miami, that's making Journey. Your next big mm -hmm. AAA developer is going to be one of these small guys, and, and that's mm -hmm. why it's important that they, they develop relationships from day one. And it's so, an important thing too, because you know, because we talked about uh, you know the state of the the economy and the way that uh, the industry is and whatnot. The the, the indies, and we mentioned this before, it's an important thing because these games aren't sixteen seventy dollars. Makes it a lot more attractive for gamers and developers. And, and indies don't have an unlimited budget, man. They 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 mm. their mortgage payments depend on their game succeeding and i'm sorry man but when when most but the smart developers follow the money okay for better for i hate putting it in cynical terms like that but even yacht club games who's got one of the highest rated games of the year with shovel knight said yep. outright that we are not satisfied with leaving this on the pc and wii u and 3ds platforms which suggests that they are probably i would put money on it that they are already on work on the playstation and xbox versions of shovel knight based yeah. on the acclaim and the sales it's getting right now they're not stupid man they gotta feed their kids yeah. nobody can afford to be plat platform 
fanboy today. I think any smart developer is platform agnostic because they know that they need to get those units out and they and and no no other generation has been this close since mm -hmm. like I'd say Super Nintendo Genesis. The hardware is very similar. Let's be honest. I mean, with the exception of the the RAM on the Xbox One, you know, processor wise or anything, they are very very similar. You know, the the, the look of the boxes are completely different. But uh, you know, other than that, it, it's uh, it, it really comes it's, down to like I said before, whether you like Drake or Master Chief. I, I yep. hate to put it in those terms because not everybody likes those games, but you understand what I'm saying. Yep. And, and yes, Nintendo. Has though has I'd say better exclusives and and spades more, but they don't have that filler, that that comfortable mattress of third parties to rest on when when their first party, all these first party games are getting delayed, especially with Sony, they're hurting right now. But yeah. they have a very promising 2015. They're gonna make up for it. And, and and like I keep saying, Joe, things are gonna change next year. People are concerned about the PS4. They're concerned about the Xbox One. They're underpowered. They can't do what PCs can do. Wait till it's... cloud processing comes into the picture. We are already seeing the potential of these systems in the Phantom Pain and Batman. Next year is going to change things. And when Uncharted 4 comes out, and when Halo 5 comes out, what is Nintendo going to have to throw up there? They're going to have Zelda, but what else, man? Yeah, it's you know it's right in Sony's name. I don't want to like, be a Nintendo right? hater. I want them to succeed. Oh, believe me, I I, I do too. It, it's uh, just you know of a matter of does Nintendo really want to want to succeed? And it's you know, and I think it comes down to them just kind of humbling themselves. Like o Xbox got humbled. It's like admitting we failed. We know. Yeah. Let's 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 move on. Let's not just like sit and cry in the corner and say okay, we'll wait till mm -hmm. wait till I come up with something next. It would be it would be very. Out of the, the out of the Nintendo DNA to do that, but uh, it's something they're, they're either going to have to do or they're going to die a, a long, painful death. I think. And I, yeah, I don't it's like you said. Like, like, like I said, I'm not saying like like you just said. No, I'm not saying that that's what I want to happen. I'm just saying that that's what could happen if they continue down this path that they're on right now. Right, because that's the thing, man. There has been a statistical downturn, with the exception of the Wii, Joe, and I. Mm -hmm. It's like you, you can't ignore history. Yes, Nintendo surprises us. Yes, 3DS had a great turnaround. That's awesome. But mm -hmm. it's been a steady downturn since the N64. And I know people are going to point to the Wii and say, oh, 100 million units plus sold. Yeah, 100 mm -hmm. million units that collected dust and that barely sold any software. So the Wii was a joke and was an anomaly in an otherwise downward trend. So can they put it up? They got to start addressing the concerns we've laid out and really just start to think ahead of their competition again like they used to. Otherwise, yep. yeah, it could be the way of Neo Geo and Turbo Graphics is just kind of like a niche system that'll have its base, its tiny little base over mm -hmm. time, but we'll just kind of keep losing money in the face of the people who are doing things right. So, I don't know. Anything yep. else to kind of finish? Uh, we're kind of near the end of this. Anything else to finish off with here, Joe? Well, that wraps it up uh, pretty nicely. Like I said, uh, you know, hopefully... Nintendo can uh, kind of take some of this advice and kind of turn things around. So like I said, you know, if they don't uh, change their outlook on these things, it, it, uh, it yeah. could spell all disaster for them. Yeah. To sum up, number one, third-party allegiances need to forge those yep. again and the trust. Number two, open those doors for the indies. Number three, mm -hmm. get into streaming, okay? Streaming, yep. for me, is the less gimmicky of all the major eighth-generation things that are happening. And really, when it comes to hardware, Really, you just you gotta catch up. It's time to catch up to the to, to the the other competitors. I, th I hope it can be done. We'll see what happens. But time to start listening, Nintendo. Otherwise, yeah, you can't be on an island forever and, and keep running your company into the ground. So that's a massive uh, post E3 after the dust after the dust settles report uh, by yours, Mike Frusios and Joe Morin. We'll be back with more content uh, now back from the summer break. So stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe, like favorite us on YouTube and also check out our Twitch channels. Joe, you've got yours. Yep, my uh, Twitch channel is uh, twitch.tv forward slash Joe Morin app. J-O-E-M-O-R-I-N app, A-P-P. And I am 24-Bit Heroes. You can check us streaming all kinds of fun stuff over mm -hmm. there. And uh, also make sure you're paying attention to the marquee on this episode as there's lots of other great channels that uh, we support as well. So uh, thanks for tuning in to Joyce Justice League and game on, guys. Game on. Peace.